Hey there. All right, so this is uh, this is one of the extra videos that you patrons are getting that I'm not going to be putting out on uh, on YouTube. And this is pretty much kind of a it's a beginner's video, but it goes into a little more advanced. So what we're going to talk about today here is the basic frailing strum. So the basic frailing strum, uh, if you is basically it's a strike. And what we're doing is we're using the second finger, the nail of the second finger. Now, some people prefer to use the nail of the first finger. Uh, I prefer to use the nail of the second finger. You can use whichever works best for you. But on the whole, I would say it's probably going to end up being the nail of the second finger. So, so it's a strike. Then it's a strum. And then it's a pull-off on the fifth string. I'm just going to lower this just the tiniest little bit so it catches more of my... Okay, and I'll back up just a little. Anyway, so yes. So it's a strike, a strum, and then a thumb. Now I have to also recommend the, the videos of Patrick Costello. Because uh, Patrick was a very, very good, at, certainly, at teaching the frailing strum. And... Uh, but in its simplest form, it's strike, strum, thumb. Strike, strum, thumb. So, so ideally what you're doing is you're just practicing. You're striking down. And it doesn't really matter, at least at the beginning, it doesn't really matter what string you're starting to strike down with. So you're striking down, then you're strumming and then you're plucking up on the fifth string. The fifth string almost never gets fretted. I mean, there are rare occasions when you do, but so that's usually, that's what your, that's your kind of rhythmic drone. Some people call it a drone, some just people call it a rhythmic device. So if you can, if you can alternate between strings, so you're going, on the G string, or rather on the D string, and then the D string. You can get a nice little rhythm there. Now the goal that you have to do is you have to get to the point where this is so embedded that you can just keep doing it, and it doesn't matter what else you're doing. Especially if you want to sing. Now the way I did this, and <laughs> you may find this crazy, I actually used to sit there, I would lock myself in a room with a, station, on a, on a stationary bicycle, and I would have movies with subtitles. Actually, a lot of times they were like Japanese samurai movies or something like the Zatuichi films, um, but they would have subtitles on them, so I didn't need to hear what was going on. I didn't need uh, to have the sound going, and I would literally sit there, and I would ride the stationary bicycle for exercise while doing this, just over and over and over again. And at the beginning, it was very difficult to coordinate doing the stationary bicycle and pedaling while I was doing this. And then that got easier, so I had to start out really slowly. I'd go, and then I'd screw it up, and I'd start again. And I remember at the beginning, it was... I'm not going to say it was torture, but it was really difficult. It was hard to get through more than one or two. No. Yeah. But you have to keep it. It'll come. It'll come. But you have to spend a lot of time just practicing this. And I know that sounds boring. But I found for me that frailing, what some people call claw hammer, Actually, these days, probably most people call it claw hammer. 
came much more easily for me than, you know, even though I play a lot of finger style guitar, for some reason, fingering, finger picking. Never worked for me. Frailing came much more easily. Don't ask me why. But anyway, so I started out that way, just... You can do it softly. And just practice. Just do it over and over again until it becomes so ingrained you don't have to think about it very much. And then you can start doing chords. And once you can put those together, For a lot of songs, all you really need is this G, which is the open, and the C, and that D. Although you met the beginning, you may find the D7 is easier, because that's only two fingers. Once you become so comfortable with this, that makes it easier to start singing along, which is the whole point. That's one of the nice things about the frailing strum. It's really made for people who sing, for banjo players who sing. And it doesn't really matter which string you hit with your original strike. Anyway, so that's the introductory video to the frailing. And one thing I did want to mention is I, I do get people who ask me, you know, why do I call it frailing and why do some people call it claw hammer? It's really all, it's mostly all the same thing. Everything, you, it all used to be called frailing. Originally that's, you know, and part of the reason why I like frailing is when I, when I hear the word claw hammer and then I also see some of the instructions for claw hammer, I see people are actually you know, it's like they're holding their hand in a very rigid, fixed way and just, you know, they're... Now, I can't play that way. Part of it's because uh, of the way, I, uh, the way I came here from guitar. I started playing banjo after I'd been playing guitar. Uh, and, but my hand is much looser. I don't have that. I don't feel I've got that claw kind of feeling. I, I, I never felt comfortable with that, so the name Claw Hammer just didn't appeal to me. Um, now, a lot of people will tell you that true Claw Hammer is, you know, there's a lot of drop thumbing involved and a lot of very intricate, uh, a lot of very intricate right hand work. And a lot of people, you know, use nothing but, you know, different alternate tunings like the they tune this string up, the B string up to a C, so that you end up with an open chord that sounds like this, and then they can just kind of play notes up and down while they're, while they're playing. And I do... I do drop thumb, but I can't do fast drop thumb. Truth is, if I play fast, it just pretty much becomes straight frailing with some... And that's certainly not as fast as a lot of people. I'm sort of the original slow hand. But it's a rhythmic thing. 
but my right hand tends to be much looser, and my thumb tends to be much more relaxed than a lot of what claw hammer players. So the, my right hand probably has more in common with uh, with finger picking on the guitar than it does with the traditional kind of claw hammer. I hope that's useful to you, and thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.